Hello and welcome to another video. So today we're going to be fitting one of these, a booster plug to my KTM Duke 390. What I did originally was I took the uh, DB killer out of the stock exhaust. I had to drill it out and it sounded good, it had a nice tone to it but I wanted a little bit more noise. So next I decided to take the cat off. I took the cat off. Oh, no, ruined the bike. I mean, there's a video on there. I won't link to it. You can see I've only got 10 videos. Uh, yeah, I didn't like the sound. It was horrible. So then I bought a Chinese Acra Povich copy. And that was shockingly bad. That was from uh, Wish.com. Got my money back on that, though. Link pipe didn't fit. Exhaust was poor, like really poor. And then the next thing was then I'll, everyone's talking about, oh, you've decatted it. You've debaffled the exhaust, you now need an ECU, you need to tune it, blah, 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 blah. So I looked, I looked around, and there's many options, as you probably know. Booster plug is the most economical. It doesn't offer mapping as such. You can't, you know, you can't map it yourself. You can't put custom maps onto it. You literally plug that bad boy in. It tricks the ECU into thinking that it needs more fuel. It puts more fuel in and balances the extra air that you're putting in. So technically you could do the airbox mod as well. And this should be sufficient. Who knows? I've seen a few videos on YouTube. No one really goes into it in much detail to be honest. Um, so I guess we're just going to have to put one in and find out. Right, so let's open this bad boy up. Booster plug. Oh, okay. That's a big box for a little lot of stuff. One booster plug. Air temp sensor, input output, goes a bit of jiggery pokery through there. The obligatory keychain that I'm not going to be putting my keys on, but thanks guys. Nice touch. Ah, oh, a neckerchief thing. Oh, well that's a bit um that's a bit rude, isn't it? So there's the competition. Can you see that? Power commander. And it looks like booster plug is doing a wear wear on it. Uh, some free book, plan your trip to somewhere, and then installation. Now, these are just general installation instructions. For your particular bike and model, you can go on their website, boosterplug.com. Yeah, boosterplug.com, and then find your bike, and it tells you exactly how to do it. I'm going to put all this stuff back in the box for the time being. It's nice of them to include that. Well, I'll tell you a little bit of backstory. Well, why don't we get this out while I tell you it? So before buying one of these, I spoke to Jens. Jens is the he's the head honcho, he's the man over there at Booster Plug about doing this, and he said, "Yeah, yeah, crack on, do it. It's a brilliant thing. We've all got we've got a KTM Duke. In fact, Jens missus has got a, a KTM Duke 390, and she's got one on there. And they do a lot of touring, and he said it's wonderful. So here we are. I said I'd make a video about it. Like a bit of metal, like a bit of metal for a bit of reassurance. Yeah. So what we'll do is we shall." I guess we'll go to the garden. All right, these are the pre-made plugs. So you can't really get them wrong, one's male, one's female. We're gonna plug one into the bike, into the existing, we're gonna pull the existing cable out, sorry, which I shall show you that now. That's where my AIT sensor is. I'm gonna pop that out. I'm probably gonna pop that one in, and then I'm gonna pop this one into the cable, and I'm gonna route the probe, the sensor, somewhere away from the hot engine and away from the hot exhaust so it doesn't go by the exhaust doesn't go by the engine i'm reckoning it's going to go up here somewhere if i can get it under the um pillion seat then that's what i'm going to do if not maybe i'll cable tie it inside the frame i've got some clear cable ties in the motor we'll see let's get this seat off and have a look if there's space under there for that then okay so this is kept on i don't know if you can see that but that bit's open it's only held on by this little part of the bracket here. A little top tip, if you know if you don't know what it is and you can't get down on the floor, push your finger against it and then have a look at the end of your finger. Oh look, we've got a Phillips. So I've got my little screwdriver set that I keep in my laptop bag for repairs. It's too thin, I can't get my fingers around it and it's awkward, so I'm using my pliers to simulate a ratchet. Until this bad boy comes out. I don't know if it's captive or not. No, it's not captive. Screw off, pop that down there. And then this should just slide down, I would have thought. 
Let's have a look at this connector then. What's keeping that one on? Is it a push one? Right, okay, so we should push that. There you go, and it's off. Ta-da! Put this bad boy on here. Clip. That bad boy on there. There we go, that's that clipped in. I've routed the cable up through here, so I'm going to chuck a cable tie around there. Route it up through here, and I've put it inside of the back panel. And then the main part here is kind of sat loose, because... Well, actually, I say it's time to go get some cable ties. Actually, I suppose I should turn it on and see if it boots up. Boots up, it's not a computer. Power it up and see if it actually turns on. Go on, Flash, help me out. It's not come up with any errors so far. So I stand is down. Still sounds as shit as ever. It stinks. It smells of fuel like it has actually got more fuel going into it. Quick visual check for you all. So you can't really see it anywhere. Apart from there. I'll see how it goes there. I might move it. We'll see. It's not very long, the cable, so you can't really do a great deal with it. And the cable comes up here for the sensor and sticks inside there, where it should be able to measure ambient air temperature pretty easily, I would have thought, in that position. All right, I'll get the seat on, go for a ride. How does the bike feel? I mean, when I take the cat off, I can do 30 miles an hour through town, definitely in fifth, but I think I could do it in sixth as well. But it was starting to get a little bit chuggy. That's second gear though, I'm not really riding the clutch, only a little bit. Pop, pull it in a little bit. It might be one of these things as well where the bike has to get used to the new bit plugged into it and learn. But then again, I don't really know. No, I'm not wearing bike gear, I'm wearing my work clothes with a helmet and some bike gloves. So I'm not going to be razzing the tits off it. I will end up on the dual carriageway, but I will maybe freeze to death because it's pretty cold today. I think people are thinking that this is a box of magic rather than a box of engineering and they think it's going to give them an extra 100 horsepower or be like a shot of noz. People, it's not. I mean this may improve your performance a little bit but it's going to be nothing spectacular. That said, I mean if you've got 3 horsepower at this size, this weight bike and this engine size, that's quite impressive. You maybe would, you'd maybe be able to notice the difference. That's about 7% increase I think. 7.5% that's quite a big step up but the reality is this is about the reason I've got this is to smooth it out and just to get the fuel back in just in case it is running lean and I don't know if it's running lean or not because I don't have any equipment to measure that and I don't know if it's the same as it used to be on the old two strokes whether you do plug chops or not but I'll be bollocks if I'm doing a plug chop on this bike feels alright get the sun shield down because I can't see bugger all. That's 50. I mean that's pulling in sixth gear. I haven't changed down at all. I've still got a pretty decent pull on it. I'm not giving that the full beat. I mean that's fully over throttle. And the bike's not even warm yet. Let's see if we've got any rocks on the roundabout today. Oh no they're back on the roundabout. Oh muddy bit stone. Fucking people why don't they clean this shit up? like a bit of downshifting pop and bang or deceleration pop and bang
I'll get this exhaust sorted because it is nasty. Oh, gravel! Oh, that made my bomb go. More gravel. chilly out there it was not too windy but it was cold and that sun was awkwardly bright and low anyway so booster plugs installed Pff, wasn't particularly difficult the only hard part about it was getting the screw undone because of the stupid location it could do with longer leads if I'm honest because the leads this long and the plugs here on the outside of the bike so it's not that like you can put it anywhere and I can't put it further into the bike because that's where the manifold is uh, that's where the decap pipe is and that thing is very very hot and the booster plugs only made of plastic so i wouldn't want to put it too close to that uh anyway impression so what did i think easy enough to install it uh i guess i've done it right the bike works it does feel it does feel a little bit different now the bike wasn't warmed up i didn't go anywhere substantial as you'll be able to see from the video i didn't go very far did a couple of miles if that around the video around the village went down the dual carriageway for a quick blast hit the speeds to be expected i didn't want to push it too too hard a i'm not riding bike wear bike gear i'm wearing work gear knee pads but they are polyester or nylon or something <clears throat> this isn't particularly warm uh, so i didn't want to go too fast anyway the bike wasn't warmed up but even so for a cold bike it didn't chug like i thought it might yeah so it looks like the booster bike's come down i mean i've had mine for a couple of months now it's just been sat there because i haven't had a chance to install it or make a video about it but 126 pounds and 95 pence is substantially less than it was. I'm sure they were 160 or 180 a couple of months back, maybe 150, but even so, it's a lot more than it is now. So if you're gonna get one, go get one. It's not a massive amount of money. Then again, that's all relative, because if you're poor, that's a huge amount of money. And if you're rich, that's a drop in the ocean. It's a couple of pennies to you equivalently, isn't it? Or rich, relatively speaking. <clears throat> Anyway, what can I say about the booster plug? I would say, go get one. If you've decatted your bike, it's better to be safe than sorry because a new engine is not 126 pounds 95 pence, is it? And if you blow it up because it's running lean too much, or if you burn out your piston or something, it's not worth the risk, 126 pounds 95, might as well do it cover all the bases. <clears throat> that is predominantly why I bought one. I was potentially a little bit worried about the people going on about, oh, your bike's running super lean now, you're gonna burn out your pistol, you're gonna blow up your this and that. No one wants to do that, no one wants to damage their pride and joy. And it is one of my one of my several pride and joys. It's my most expensive pride and joy, that's for sure. Although shooting, yeah, no, no, it is my most expensive pride and joy. <clears throat> so yeah, for the sake of £121, £126.95, if that's what you can get it for, I say go for it because there's a lot going on inside that engine that you don't know about and you can't see. And I can't see either, so I'd rather not risk it, regardless of whether there's a chocolate biscuit involved or not. Yeah, I know, I sound like a rough bell end. Anyway, as always, like, share, subscribe. I love you, bye.